Well, hello, folks. Welcome to the week 10 lab session. Folks, like the labs of the last several weeks, I'm going to conduct my session on two applying Excel exercises from the textbook. And this week's topic is long-term assets, which is covered in chapter seven. You see in the first applying Excel exercise, I am going to calculate depreciation based on the straight line method, the double declining balance method, and the activity-based method. Then in the second applying Excel exercise, I'm gonna demonstrate how to use Excel to record gains and losses on the disposition of equipment. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to focus on the first applying Excel exercise. Now, folks, in this exercise, I am going to continue using a function I introduced during last week's lab, and I'm going to introduce two new functions. And what I want you to take from this week's lab above all else, how to use Excel as a way to calculate events, transactions pertaining to property, plant, and equipment, but also from the perspective of the course, use what I'm doing this week to prepare for the final examination. Because remember folks, the final examination is going to be based on what I covered this semester during lab. And I'm going to have more to follow about the financial examination during lectures, during labs, and even sending group emails about that. So let me begin. Now, I'm going to go first into part A of the first applying Excel exercise. You see that I have the cursor in cell I6. I am going to do a cell reference to the original cost of the asset, $96,000. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work in column H. I'm going to calculate the accumulated depreciation for this equipment. And remember what the accumulated depreciation represents. It is the amount of money that has been allocated from the balance sheet to the income statement. So how I'm going to use Excel to track accumulated depreciation, I am going to put in cell H7 a cell reference. And I'm going to cell reference G7. Now, what I'm going to do in cell H8 is I'm going to use addition to calculate the accumulated depreciation. And what I'm going to do for cell H8 is I'm going to type in equals SUM for sum. Then I'm going to type in a left parenthesis. Then I'm going to type in a dollar sign, then the letter G, then the dollar sign seven, then a colon, the letter G, the letter eight, number eight, and then write parenthesis. Then what I'm going to do for the contents in cell H8, I'm going to copy those contents and I'm going to paste them. The cells H9. H10, H11, and H12, okay? The reason I use the dollar sign in cell H8, I want to make sure that the accumulated depreciation picks up the depreciation expense for the first year and then all the way through the sixth year, which you'll see in cell H12, where I'm going to pick up the depreciation expense from years one through 
sex. Now I'm going to calculate the depreciation expense for the first year. Here is one of the new functions I am presenting this week. You see this icon, FX. I'm going to click on that icon. And what I'm going to do is in this search for a function, I'm going to type in straight line depreciation. After I type in those words, I'm going to click go. You see the third function down, SLN, that stands for straight line depreciation. I'm going to highlight this function, and then I'm going to click OK. You see now the function arguments appearing on the screen. What I'm going to do now is populate the cost, the salvage, and the life fields within this function arguments box. The cost is right here, $96,000. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use absolute cell reference. So for the cost, dollar sign C, dollar sign 4. Now the salvage. The salvage you see right here, which is the estimated residual value in cell C5. So for the salvage, dollar sign C, dollar sign 5. The life is the estimated useful life appearing in cell C6. So I'm going to type in for the life, dollar sign C, dollar sign 6. I'm going to click OK. And you see the accumulated depreciation of $12,000. The reason I put the dollar signs in is to do this. In cell G7, I'm going to copy the formula and I'm going to paste it. The cells G8, G9, G10, G11, and G12. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is move the cursor to cell I7. The book value at the end of year one is what it was at the beginning of the asset's useful life. $96,000 minus the accumulated depreciation. So in cell I7, I'm going to type the following equals dollar sign I6, I dollar six minus H7. You see at the end of the asset of year one, the assets book value, $84,000. The original book value of 96,000 minus the accumulated depreciation of 12,000. Now I'm going to copy this formula from cell I7 and paste it. Cells I8, I9, I10, I11, and I12. So you see at the end of the assets useful life, year six, the book value is $24,000. The book value represents the estimated residual value you see in cell C5 for $24,000. Folks, one thing to keep in mind when you are doing this type of work, the asset's book value at the end of its useful life will equal its estimated residual value 
or its salvage value, okay? Now that I've completed the straight line depreciation calculation, I'm now going to record the year three adjusting entry. So I am in cell M9. I'm gonna do cell reference for cell G9 to get the $12,000 for depreciation expense. The credit that will appear in cell N10, I'm gonna cell reference once again the depreciation expense in cell G9. So the year three adjusting entry to record the depreciation expense, a debit to depreciation expense, and a credit to accumulate depreciation. The dollar amount, what you see in row nine, the depreciation expense for year three, $12,000. So I just completed part A of applying Excel 7-1. Next, I'm going to calculate the depreciation expense under the double declining balance method. And I'm going to use a process similar to what I did for straight line. I'm in cell I-18, and I'm going to sell reference for the book value, the original cost of $96,000. Then what I'm going to do for cell I-19 is I'm going to begin the process of calculating the book value at the end of years one through six. So in cell I-19, I'm going to type an equal sign. And then I'm going to dollar sign I, dollar sign 18, and then subtract the accumulated depreciation appearing in cell H19, okay? So in cell I19, you should have equal sign, dollar sign I, dollar sign 18, minus H19. I'm going to copy that formula, and I'm going to paste it. The cells I20. I-21, I-22, I-23, and I-24. Now, I'm going to focus on column H to calculate the accumulated depreciation. In cell H-19, the accumulated depreciation is going to be very simple. The depreciation expense in year one, which is in cell G-19. Now, in cell H20, I'm going to use the sum function. So in cell H20, I'm going to type equals SUM, left parenthesis, dollar sign G, dollar sign 19, colon G20, right parenthesis. Okay. I'm now going to take this formula, copy it, and paste it. Cells H21. H22, H23, and H24. Now I'm going to work in column G to calculate the depreciation expense for each year under the double declining balance method. In cell G19, I'm once again going to rely on the function key, this FX icon. I'm gonna click that, and then when it says search for a function, I'm gonna type double, declining, balance. After I type double declining balance, I'm gonna click go. And you see right here, or select the function, DDB. That is the acronym for double declining balance, which represents the double declining balance function 
the next function I'm introducing this week. Now I'm going to click OK. You see the function arguments appearing. The cost is the original cost appearing in cell C4. So I'm going to type in dollar sign C, dollar sign 4. The salvage is the estimated residual value in cell C5. So I'm going to type dollar sign C, dollar sign 5. The life is the estimated useful years in cell C6. So I'm going to type in dollar sign C, dollar sign 6. Now the period. The period represents the data in column F. Year numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. So for year one, the period, I'm gonna type in cell F19, okay? I'm gonna click okay. We have the depreciation expense. Now I'm gonna take the formula in cell G19. I'm gonna copy it and paste it, the cells G20, G21, G22, G23, and G24. You see this method has a much different value stream, for lack of a better term, regarding annual depreciation. You see over time that the depreciation expense by year decreases. That's the basis of double declining balance. Higher depreciation expense will be recognized at the beginning of the asset's useful life. Over time, the expense gets smaller. But notice at the end of the asset's useful life, like straight line, the Book value at the end of the asset's useful life under double declining balance will be the estimated residual value you see in cell C5. Now I'm going to record the journal entry or prepare the adjusting entry for year three under the double declining balance. I'm in cell M21 and I'm going to do cell reference equals G21, and then in cell N22 equals G21. So if this company was using the double declining balance method, the year three adjusting entry to record depreciation expense, debit depreciation expense for $14,222, credit accumulated depreciation for $14,222. The third and final method I'm going to use in this exercise is the activity base. I'm going to work from columns I to G. The book value in cell I30 equal sign C Four. Actually, I'm going to do a dollar sign C, dollar sign four for the 96,000. The year one book value is going to be equal sign, dollar sign I, dollar sign 30, minus H31. We're going to take the book value of the asset and subtract the accumulated depreciation. So I'm going to take the formula in I31, copy it, and then I'm going to paste it. The cells I32, I33, I34, I35, and I36. Now the accumulated depreciation. I'm in cell H31. I'm going to do cell reference. Equals G31. 
31. Okay. Now for year two. Year two, I'm going to do the following in cell H32. Equals SUM for sum. Left parenthesis. Dollar sign G. Dollar sign 31. Colon. G32. Right parenthesis. This is going to allow me to copy the formula in cell H32 and paste it smoothly in cells H33, H34, H35, and H36. Now comes the depreciation expense under the activity-based method. Now, folks, this one is going to be much different than what I did for both straight line and double declining values. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to one of the functions I introduced you to last week, the min function, M-I-N. So I'm going to begin my work in cell G31. In cell G31, I'm going to type the following. Equals M-I-N for min, left parenthesis. I'm going to go to cell C9, and then I'm going to type in an asterisk to multiply. Then I'm going to type in another left parenthesis, and then I'm going to do the following. I'm going to take the original cost, Oh, pardon me. I'm going to take the original. Yeah, I'm going to take the original cost and I'm going to divide that by the estimated units, which is in cell C10. And I'm going to put dollar signs dollar sign C, dollar sign four, dollar sign C, dollar sign seven. Then I'm going to type in another parenthesis, and then I'm going to multiply that. Actually, no. Then I'm going to type in a comma. Then I'm going to type in dollar sign I, dollar sign 30. Then I'm going to subtract the residual value in C5. Actually, I'm going to remove the dollar signs here. And I'm going to put the dollar signs here for C5 and write parenthesis, okay? Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to copy this formula in cell G31, and I'm going to paste it in cells G32, before I do that. For this activity-based depreciation, sorry about this, folks. Folks, oh, sorry about that delay. What I did is within column G, I did the following. In column G, cell G31, I used the min function to take the following. I took the actual number of units produced beginning in cell C9. And I multiplied it by the following calculation. The book value of the equipment minus its estimated residual value. Then that difference has been divided by the estimated 
units that you see in cell C7. That calculation is compared to the following. The difference between the book value of the equipment over time minus its estimated residual value. So in cell G31, you should have the following equals MIN for min, left parenthesis, C9 asterisk, left parenthesis, dollar sign I, dollar sign 30, minus dollar sign C, dollar sign 5, right parenthesis, backslash, which means divide, dollar sign C, dollar sign 7, comma, I30 minus dollar sign C, dollar sign 5, right parenthesis. By putting in the dollar signs, emphasizing absolute cell reference, we copy the formula from cell C31 and paste them to cells G32, G33, G34, G35, and G36. You see at the end of the asset's useful life, the book value corresponds or ties into the estimated residual value you see in cell C5. So now I'm going to put the cursor to cell M33. I'm going to record the year three adjusting entry using activity-based depreciation. The debit to depreciation expense will be the dollar amount in cell G33, $15,840. The credit to accumulated depreciation, the dollar amount in cell G34, pardon me, sorry, cell C33, pardon me, the 15000 this activity-based method has no function specifically listed in Excel, like double declining balance with the DDB function and straight line with the SLM. I am taking the function that I introduced to you last week, the min function, and am using the min function to compare what the depreciation should be based on the relationship between the assets, the preachable cost, its original cost minus its residual value, dividing it by the estimated life in units, taking that relationship and multiplying it by the actual number of units produced which is referenced in cells C9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. If that dollar amount is smaller than the following, the difference between the asset's book value and its salvage value or residual value, we take the first calculation. If not, we take the second calculation. What makes this activity-based method a bit challenging. Notice what's going on in column C. In cell C7, it has been estimated that this machine can produce 10,000 units. But look what's happened over the six-year period. This machine produced 11,000 units because we have this difference between the estimated number of units and the actual number of units. The straight, the part of the activity-based method must have a rounding factor come into play so that we ultimately get back to the residual value of the asset at the end of its useful life. And the only way to accomplish this 
is to use the min function. So folks, make sure that you take notes on what I put into cell C G31. And from that, copy and paste the formula, the cells G32, G33, G34, G35, and G36. So you can see how to use the min function. But something else to keep in mind with this exercise. For the straight line depreciation, you can use a function labeled SLN to calculate straight line depreciation. And for double declining balance, you can use a function labeled DDB to calculate depreciation expense under the double declining balance method. This concludes my work on the first Applying Excel exercise in Chapter 7. Now I am going to work on the second Applying Excel exercise. And what I'm going to focus on is how to use Excel to record the gain or loss on the disposal of a fixed asset. The first thing I must do is I must calculate the assets book value at the end of the third year. How I'm going to do that is the following. In cell I6, I am going to cell reference, the book value. So I'm going to type in an equal sign, click on cell C4 to pull the $96,000. The book value at the end of year one the difference between the book value and the accumulated depreciation. So in cell I7 equals dollar sign I, dollar sign six, minus H7. Then I'm going to copy the formula from cell I7 and paste it. The cells I8 and I9. Now I'm going to calculate the accumulated depreciation amounts under column A. In cell H7, I'm going to do a simple cell reference equals G7. Then in cell H8, I'm going to type the following equals SUM for sum left parenthesis, dollar sign G, dollar sign seven, colon, G8. What I'm doing is I'm adding the depreciation expense for the first two years. Then I'm gonna copy the formula from cell H8, and I'm gonna paste it to cell H9. Because we are using the straight line method, I'm going to use the straight line function. Now I'm going to repeat the process I did from the first applying Excel exercise. So in cell G7, I'm going to type the following equals. But before I do that, I'm going to use the function key. Once again, search for a function. I'm going to type in straight line. Appreciation. I'm going to click go, and you see the third function down, SLN. I'm going to click OK. The cost is going to be the cost of the asset. Dollar sign C, dollar sign 4 to get the 96000 The salvage is the estimated residual value. Is cell C5, dollar sign C, dollar sign 5. The life is the estimated useful years in cell C6, dollar sign C, dollar sign 6. Folks, once again, I'm using the dollar signs to create absolute cell references. By creating absolute cell references, 
I can copy the formula and then paste the cells G8 and G9. Now I'm going to work on part B. But before I do that, I'm going to go to cell G17 and type the following. Equals if, left parenthesis, H12 greater than H16, comma. I put the word gain in quotes, then a comma, then in quotes, I type in the word loss, okay? Because what I want Excel to do is to determine whether a gain or loss has been recognized in this transaction. The original cost of the asset is in cell C4, the 96,000. The accumulated depreciation at the end of year three is in cell H8, H9, sorry about that, 36,000. The book value is the difference between the original cost and the accumulated depreciation. So in cell H16, you should have equals G14 minus G15. The original cost of 96,000 minus the accumulated depreciation of 36,000. That gives us $60,000. The gain or loss is going to be the difference between the $70,000 sale amount and the $60,000 book value. That gives us $10,000. The debit to cash is going to be the sale amount of $70,000. The accumulated depreciation is going to be the accumulated depreciation of 36,000. The credit to equipment, its original cost of 96,000. The difference is going to be the amount of the gain. That is, we're going to put that in cell H17. And you see what happens. The gain column already calculates. So this journal entry, because the sale amount is greater than the book value, a gain is being recognized. But you're going to see as we go to the next journal entry. If cash is received, we debit cash. The second debit is going to be to accumulated depreciation to take the accumulated depreciation off the books. The credit to equipment is to remove its cost from the books. Because the sale amount is greater than the asset's book value, that difference is recorded as a credit to the gain account. But what would happen if the sale amount is less than the asset's book value? This is part C. The original cost, 96000 The accumulated depreciation, 36,000. The book value, the original cost, minus the accumulated depreciation. The gain or loss, the book value, minus the sale amount. Okay? Now, the debit to cash will be $50,000. The debit to accumulated depreciation, 
36,000. The credit to equipment, 96,000. The difference of 10,000 is gonna be recorded as a loss. So when we have a situation where the sale amount of an asset is less than the asset's book value, the journal entry has a template. The sale amount or the cash received will always result to a debit to cash. The accumulated depreciation will be debited. The equipment will be credited. Because the sale amount is less than the book value, a loss is being recognized. That loss that you see here of $10,000 will result in a debit, okay? Now, what would happen if the asset was retired? In other words, the asset was not disposed. In my work at Foot Locker, when assets were retired, they were typically thrown away. Because these assets were thrown away, no cash was received. Therefore, the book value would equal the amount of the loss. Okay, the book value would equal the amount of the loss. So we debit the loss account for the amount of the book value. We debit the accumulated depreciation for what exists at the end of year three when the asset was disposed, and then the equipment, its original cost. So you see in cell J30, and it states, if L30, L30 you see right here, is equal to zero, we put nothing in there. If not, we insert the word loss. The reason the word loss appears is in cell L30, a dollar amount of $60,000 appears. And that dollar amount comes from the following if statement. If in cell G33, the word loss appears, you put in the amount of the loss appearing in cell H30, and make sure you put a minus sign in front of that so you have the 60,000 go from a negative to a positive. But if the word loss does not appear in cell G33, you don't put anything in there, okay? So what I want you to see here is how to use Excel to calculate gains and losses from the sale of equipment or a situation where a loss is recognized when the asset was retired. And what that simply means, no cash was received on the disposal. So folks, once again, to keep in mind when it comes to this week's lab, the priority is not to take this to a future quiz or a future semester exam. The priority is to take this to the final examination so you once again have an understanding of if statements, min functions, absolute cell references, and two new functions I introduce you to this week. The straight line function, SLN, and the double declining balance function, DDB, okay? Folks, this is gonna conclude this week's lab. If any of you have any questions, feel free to contact me offline. Thank you.